So as Father Mark has just said, my name is Jonathan Henry, and I'm a fourth year seminarian studying for the Archdiocese of Birmingham at the Venerable English College in Rome. So once I've finished my time here in Rome, I'll be returning to the Archdiocese to be a priest like Father Mark uh, in the, the area of the Archdiocese of Birmingham. It could be sent to any parish or, or any other kind of uh, ministry within that territory. It's always slightly strange to talk about what life is like for someone preparing for the priesthood. We've heard from Father Pavel about how he is both a monk and a priest, but the seminarian is neither, but lives in a way that has lots of uh, similar aspects to both of those ways of life. Nobody is called to be a seminarian. It is not a vocation in itself. So to be a seminarian is to be a lay person who is seriously discerning the priesthood, living and working in a community that helps prepare men for ministry. Over the course of eight years of formation, seminarians grapple with a whole load of questions about themselves, about the priesthood, about the church. And just like how Father Mark was able to separate out three different aspects of priestly ministry, uh, these days we can separate the training for the priesthood as well into four pillars of formation as they're known in, in the church's documentation. So in the first instance, they'll address questions to do with their own humanity, trying to understand themselves and their relationships more profoundly. Um, Pope John Paul II says that priests need to be experts in their own humanity in order to help other people. And that's exactly what we try and do in the very first instance in seminary. They also grow in their spiritual lives through community prayer, including especially the mass and the celebration of the divine office. They also have, of course, private prayer guided by a spiritual director. They also study philosophy and theology to try and have a solid grasp of the church's teachings, and they prepare themselves for pastoral ministry. They apply what they've learned in the classroom to the complicated reality of the world around us through placements in parishes, schools, hospitals, prisons, and everywhere else. So to answer the question, what is my vocation? I'm pretty confident at this point that my vocation is to be a diocesan priest, but every single day is an opportunity to think again and to ask through my prayer and through my daily work whether I'm in the right place. And at present, that question of discernment is exactly what the church wants me to do. My sense of a priestly vocation then began in quite a similar way to Father Pavel's with my involvement in my home parish. I was one of the altar servers and under the guidance of a very inspiring parish priest, I took pride in my involvement at mass as a true act of service for the parish. I knew that serving mass well made it easy for everybody to pray, that ceremonies running smoothly were an external sign of heartfelt devotion to God. But it wasn't until my parish priest moved to his next assignment that I began to recognise that God might be calling me to the priesthood as well. During our priest's induction mass in his new parish, when I was about 14 years old, I was daydreaming during the Eucharistic prayer, as many young people do, and I caught myself as I asked, I wonder what parish I might end up in when I'm older? How would I order things in a parish community? It wasn't as though I felt called out of the blue to become a priest. Instead, I felt as though God had been gradually working in my life to give me the skills and the experiences that I would need to serve as a priest well. And that this for me was the moment when I first consciously recognized the gifts that he had always been giving me, that he wanted me to share with others. While some people do seem to have a moment like St. Paul on the road to Damascus, where they suddenly realized that they had been looking for God in completely the wrong place, mine was a bit more like the road to Emmaus. There was a moment when God showed me what he had been doing in my life the whole time. So as for daily life in the seminary, things are slightly different from place to place. Every community has its own different way of doing things. 
But here in Rome, our day begins with morning prayer as a community at 6.45, followed immediately by mass. We're a community of about 30 people, including uh, seminarians, deacons, student priests who might be coming back for further study, and then the community of staff as well. Then we have breakfast, and after that, we usually have lectures at one of the universities in Rome. I'm currently studying theology at the Gregorian University, which is the Jesuit-run university in Rome. So I usually have two to four hours of lectures each morning covering a really wide range of subjects. At the moment, we're doing things like church history, uh, various passages from scripture, certain chunks of the, the New Testament, uh, moral theology, canon law. So a really broad range of subjects, all of which is useful in ministry in some way. After those classes, we return to the college for lunch as a community. And I'll add at this point as well, lunch sounds like a reasonably boring, practical part of the day. But when you are living together as a community and you do have these times where we all come together in a way that's compulsory, but more than that, it's a way of bringing people together. And it is truly practice for diocesan ministry when you're not always in the mood to be having those kinds of conversations. And it is part of the formation experience in a way that you might not imagine or you might be, not be able to picture. Then in the afternoons, while our timetable doesn't seem to have that much on, there's an enormous amount going on in the background. Some of us head out for our pastoral work somewhere in the city for a few hours. Others might have some practical classes in-house, addressing topics like homiletics or how to hear confessions or how to say mass. There might be some work to get on with for the house, like choir rehearsals or giving a tour to a group of guests, or there might be a university essay to get on with. There's also some beautiful opportunities for prayer led by the community. There's a holy hour most days led by one of the seminarians from five until six. And after all of this, we come back together for evening prayer as a community before the day draws to a close. It goes without saying that in the midst of all this activity is faith. Without faith, the entirety of seminary lacks direction, it likes purpose. But at the same time, there is something about the programmed routine of seminary and how busy everything seems to be that sometimes it's easy for our relationship with God to accidentally disappear from view. For morning prayer to become just words rather than authentic prayer, especially at that early time in the day, or for our pastoral work to become a box ticking activity rather than a means of encountering God through true service. Part of the process of discernment then, and one of the areas for growth throughout these eight years, is how we're able to integrate our life of faith into the practical demands of seminary. While most parish priests don't have quite as strict a timetable as we do, there are certainly many practical demands on their time. And to be able to see all of this as building up a relationship with God rather than a barrier to that relationship is key to living the priesthood well. Seminary life is truly mixed with joy and with sorrow. The most obvious source of sorrow is exactly what I described at the at the beginning, that nobody is called to be a seminarian, and in that sense, every single member of our community would rather be somewhere else, in the parish. There is something inherently frustrating then in the church asking us to commit all this time away from where we feel called, and to have that desire really tested, explored, and strengthened. Similarly, community life can be difficult. While every seminary is full of wonderful people, all with the same mission in mind, this does not mean that we all see eye to eye. And there are some days when the last thing I want to do is exchange small talk at lunch with people I find difficult. But it's also an opportunity to develop the skills needed for ministry and to see the fruit of years of preparation in some small way in the seminary community. For example, to give a short reflection to the other seminarians and to have those members of the house share how it resonated with them in some way, or to recognize how my weekly pastoral work is making a difference in the lives of young people gives a wonderful vision of how important the priesthood is and how there is so much potential through our ministry in the future 
to show people the love of Christ and to build up their relationship with God. And there we are. Time is up. 